Paint Show. We're honored to have Mick Box from the legendary Uriah Heap on the line with us from London or somewhere in the UK. Mick, how are you? I'm doing fine, my friend. Good. Really, really, really good. I mean, we're, we're uh, at the moment, we're in a writing stage uh, for a new album, so yeah. it's all very exciting and very creative. Well, that's <laughs> great. That is great news. And, you know, I, first off, how's Bernie? Bernie's doing fine. He's actually on the road to recovery now. Um, everything's going according to plan, so um, we'll be back. He'll be back on stage pretty soon. Good. We, we got a tour that starts at the end of March with just me and Bernie. We play at this thing in Germany called the Rock Meets Classic, where we play with the um, the Prague Bohemian Orchestra. Oh. Um, and it's, just, it's a lot of fun, and he'll be back ready for that. So, um, good. yeah, he's doing fine. Thanks very much, mate. Well, good, good. That's great. And, you know, I just feel it's appropriate to say uh, RIP to, to our good friend John Wetton. Uh, uh, you know, he'll be missed, and what a voice. And uh, I know you had great years with him, or, or at least a couple albums with John. Yes, um, you know, John was a, a special character. You know, he really had a... Um a talent in, in so many areas, you know, as a lyricist, as a songwriter, as a bass player, and as a vocalist, you know, he was he was an all-rounder. And, uh, yes, yeah, it's a sad loss for all of us, yeah. I went to his um, funeral um, a couple of days ago, and um, yeah. it was well attended by lots of people, you know, there was a lot of love being shown there, so... Yeah, but his music will carry on, you know, his music is still there for us all to enjoy. Yes, yes. Mick, I wanted to tell you, I was at the gym a couple of months ago, and I'm... I'm, I'm hearing this. They, they usually have a classic station on. It's terrestrial radio. We're here in Texas, and and you know, I'm I'm listening to this, and there it is. You know, uh, 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 and I'm thinking, now hold on, I know this song, and then I realize it's Lady in Black, and then I realize, <laughs> and then I realize it's not Ken singing, it, it's Bernie. So somehow they got their hands on the celebration CD. And uh, and and there it was. It just sounded uh, better than ever. And I was uh, fantastic. A, a, a <laughs> smile. I, I worked out better that day than any day. A big smile went across my face, and I think I ran even faster on the treadmill. <laughs> so, the, okay, well, Fred, I'm, I'm finding you to go in and out at the moment. So uh, okay. Excuse me if I don't answer correctly. But Lady in Black was a, a very unique song because it was only a Salisbury album, which was our second album. And it was just an album track, and then it was about five or six years later, it got picked up by by a DJ in Germany, and yeah. it just became a worldwide hit. It was a very, very one of those really odd, unique songs. Yes, and and uh, and and what a song! And here it is, 2017, and I'm hearing it in the gym in Dallas, Texas. And so, uh, just a testament. Well, that's fantastic, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now. Uh, here's a, here's another story. We had a musician on our show not long ago. His name is Athena. He's from a band called Midnight, and they're in Cleveland. Okay, and uh, yeah. so we're talking and, and we're sharing some you know some uh, some some stories and such. And I mention you guys. He says, "I love Mechbox, and I have Uriah uh, tattooed on one arm and Heap tattooed on the other arm," <laughs> and. I said, unbelievable. Yes. <laughs> and that's unbelievable. Yes, and uh, just out of the blue, we're talking Uriah Heap. So there, and again, a chill went down my spine. And I thought, man, you know, uh, this was meant to be. I hope I get to talk to Mick soon. So, so what? This is a guy who played with you uh, at a club in Cleveland a while back, and he said uh, he really appreciated the fact that. When uh, I, I think you used his cabinet, but had the wheels taken off, and uh, used his speaker cabinet, and and he said from now on he does not have wheels on it because he wants to feel the sound on the on the floor, you know. Um, oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. That's that's one of my big things, to be honest. <laughs> there you go. You know, I just like to feel the the resonance of the of the bottom end um, on the stage. Um, I don't like it, you know, elevated on wheels or any other device. Just um, yeah. You know, that, that, if, if it's on the floor, it's real. <laughs> yes, if it's that's right, that's right. And and you know what? We want to feel it out in the audience too. And uh, so he wanted me to relay that story to you. But here's another thing: he wanted me to let you know a big thank you to the solo in Rainbow Demon because he felt it was very simple and very powerful. And uh, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of great musicians who feel that way about your various solos, Mick. 
Oh, that's great. You know, um, I mean, certain solos like that don't need to be complicated. You know, they've got to be heartfelt yeah. and in the groove and in the pocket um, with the song. And I think that one suits it very well. That's right. We don't. We don't. As fans, we don't necessarily need to hear excessive noodling. We we, we want, like you said, something that's just from the inside. And <laughs> <laughs> no, get, get me feeling over noodling any time. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yes. Now I and then I got one more story for you. Okay, Mick. Now uh, I'm attending this music festival in Austin uh, a couple years back, and um, King Diamond is on tour. Now. Uh, King Diamond lives here in North Texas area. Um, well, he was uh, he was doing his tour, and before he hits the stage, the lights go out, and he plays the full length "Easy Living." Fantastic! Yes, and, <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, I, and did hear, I did hear that, that you know um, King Diamond was quite influenced by our music, and, and, and notably David Byron's vocals. Yeah, he uh, he's very influenced by Byron. He loves the Byron years, is what I'm told. He's right here in our neck of the woods, and, and frankly, I've been trying to reach out to him to get him to come and talk to me about uh, more uh, Uriah Heep songs. <laughs> um, Brilliant. Yes. So, so I mean, here here I was. I'm I'm out in the open field with thousands of people in Austin, Texas. Uh, I'm just trying to paint the picture, and I uh, got a big stage, lots of lighting. The the the, the lights. As we can, you know, the fans can tell the lights go down, the, 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 the band's ready to hit the stage, but he will not come out until he plays a Uriah Heep song, and I thought, this is tremendous. That's <laughs> tops, that's tops. <laughs> tell him he's the top man. <laughs> yes, I will. I bet, yeah, I will, I will. Uh, his name is Kim, and uh, yeah, he lives here in Texas now, so. Well, hey, For I. Real. Here, here's my thing. I'm hoping that we can have a talk here, and and I don't ask any questions you've been asked before. That's kind of my goal. <laughs> so, okay, uh, my friend. <laughs> Mick, Mick. Uh, so, is it? Does it ever happen that Bernie forgets a lyric? He looks out the audience. He sees them all singing it, and then he realizes, oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, so they get it. Bernie misses the lyrics. If, if he forgets a lyric, does he just look out in the audience and then he sees all the crowd singing that oh, lyric? Just, just, just occasionally, but you use yeah. the old trick of putting the mic out to the audience they sing it for you. There you go! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's an easy cover-up. There you go. Okay, I'm not trying to pick on Barney or nothing, but I don't know. I just, I, I, I look at all... Look, I've got this great Live at Coco, which I know is um, uh, a, you know, a venue there in Camden. And uh, and what a great DVD slash CD this is. Um, oh, in fact, brilliant. yeah, we're showing it on the screen right now. And and um, the free and easy song with all the girls on stage is a real highlight, Mick. I love that. Well, we we, we decided to do it. It was funny enough we were we applied playing that song on you know, stage one of our tours, and yeah. I just noticed that there were so many people wanting to headbang him over with it. Because we play at double the speed that we recorded it, so we really do give it a heavy metal version. Yes. And and then I thought, well, wow, let's get these guys up on stage. And that night they, we brought them up on stage. It was a lot of fun, you know. And so then we started doing that every night. We don't do it now because it's it's, it's you know it's it's, it's it's run its course. But um, it was great fun to get everybody up on stage. Yeah. And, and it ended up that just got, the ladies would come up. Yeah. I love that. And, and um, they'd come up and started banging and enjoying it with us and dancing with us. It was great. You know, it, was a, it really end, ended the show on a real big high. Yes, indeed. And, and you know, they look great. This is great for that DVD, I think. And you've got all these ladies up there, and they're flinging their hair everywhere, and so is Bernie. And, and you know, it just looks like a party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Oh, my gosh. That's great. So, Mick, I just wanted to tell you, I'm one who believes the best years of Uriah Heep are in front of you. Well, it's fantastic. Not behind you. And well, it's certainly the longer lasting. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and and so here's here's my uh, here's my thinking. I, you know, I'm thinking to myself, hey, uh, Mick, you know, would it be cool to do a tour where you just play the new stuff? I think Into the Wild is brilliant. I think Outsider has got strong songs on it. And I'm thinking to myself, some of those albums in the late '90s with Trevor on there. Uh, it just really, really spoke to me as well. And, uh, uh, you know, I'm thinking to myself, I, I, I w it would be cool if Uriah Heep had the nerve to just go out there and play only new stuff because I think it's brilliant. That's great. 
the, that's great. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're albums that you know speak, you know, in, in the spirit of your eye heap. You know, they're they're, they're rock. They've they've got some good lyric content. You know, and, and they've got all the, all the usual your eye heap trademarks. So um, it's just present day your eye heap. You know, I yeah. mean, any song that we 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 perform and we put our harmonies on, we put the hammered organ on, put wah wah guitar on, you've got your eye heap. You know, <laughs> <laughs> and and don't forget five vocalists in the band, right? Yes, indeed, yes. Yes, yes. So, uh, I don't know. Yeah, well, I, I mean, we were one of the first bands that came out and used vocals as almost another instrument. Yes, indeed. Um, yeah. Yeah, because in the 60s, it was just singing sweet harmonies on the chorus line. Um, and we came out and, 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 and actually used it as an instrument. You know, we didn't j- just necessarily sing the chorus line, you know. Yeah. We stab harmonies and block harmonies and step harmonies. And, right. and it really became one of our trademarks. Indeed, and it, and if I, I guess John Anderson, I always felt he did that a little bit, you know. Um, yeah. But uh, but I see what you're saying. I I just think all of the later albums have been just straight ahead, great British rock, and they certainly deserve to be you know recognized and played. And that's well. Part- thank you very much. Well, we, we will continue in that tradition for sure. Yes, good. <laughs> well, and that's what I hear you saying. You're in the middle of recording for another one, and uh, just just tremendous. Look, I gotta say, one minute. Is a great song. This is a song that you you can't get out of your head after you've heard it once or twice. I, yeah, I mean, I, I think people people over in Europe call it an earworm. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it gets in your ear and it won't go away. <laughs> oh, that's great. That is great. It's always a sign of a good song. That one. So, um, so I've got uh, I've got a question for you. Now, I love I love uh, celebration. I love the the live the live song. I lo- I know you've got some new. Um, definitive anthologies, and then there's uh, I think there's a definitive anthology part two, and and then there's uh, yeah, and then there's anthologies. We just, we just recently done we recently we recently done one with um, a remastered version with BMG um, called Your Turn to Remember, and that, that's, yeah. that's an excellent um, anthology, and that followed on they they, they are BMG have remastered all our um, early albums. You know, along with loads of bonus tracks and yes. I mean, e- e- equal amount of songs um, on the original album and equal amount of bonus tracks. So it's it's the really exciting stuff coming out at the moment. Yes, indeed. In fact, I did notice that, and I think it was from your website, which uh, is a great resource. It is, and so you've got the remasters coming out. You've got this definitive anthology, and then you got your turn to remember, and 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 you've got a spring and summer to look forward to with Bernie back and in full flight. And, uh, you know, it just, like I said, I feel the best years of, of Uriah Heap are in front of you and not behind you. That's my opinion. I just think this, this, this later stuff is well, so we, strong. Well, thank you very much. I mean, we tend to look forward like that ourselves, you know, because you can't, you can't have anything. To look. I mean, we're very proud of our, our history, but, you know, you do have to move forward. You, you have to look towards, the, you know, the future. Yeah. And, you know, you just keep writing songs and, and going at them and playing them and, and hoping that everyone likes it. Yeah. I mean, when we include songs from a new album into our set and we play the, the you know, the, the sort of mix of, of the old and the new, if you like, they sit very, you know, sit in the bed together very, very well. Yes. And, um, yeah. and, and I think that's a good sign that we're still on, on tack. Yeah. And you know what? I, I you know, Rest in peace, Trevor. I really miss Trevor. But, Davey, you know, I'm, I'm watching the DVD, and I'm, I'm kind of running around the house doing some other things. I look out the corner of my eye, and I, I'm thinking, that's Ken standing there. No, then I realize, no, 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 that's Davey. And for a moment there, I, I thought it was Ken. For a moment, I thought it was Trevor, and then I realized, no, 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 this is the new badass bass player. And yeah, I, Davey's been. Davey's come along, and, and he's been a, a great find for us. Really, he's, yes. he's settled in in every every level. You know, the fans love him. Um, he's never tried to do anything, you know, other than um, be faithful to Travis' bass lines and bring yeah. his own stuff in as well. You know, so uh, yeah, he's, he's he's the perfect fit for us. Yes, indeed. Yes, uh, he is, and he he looks great. He sounds great. So, man, just just keep rocking on. Hey, um, and he's a, great, he's a great guy too. You know, you know what he's like with the band. He's not just getting in a a, a, a good musician into the band. He's got to fit in with the personality of the band as well. You know, and yeah. you know, you spend a lot of time on the road together. So you need to get on well with our, that, each other. And um, David just fits that yeah. uh, a thousand percent. He's great. That, that's probably more important than the musician part. <laughs> Yeah, it's because you, you know if you if you just do the musician thing and you don't get on well together, you know it, it can be a very painful place to be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, so you know, and we've had enough of that, so we're we're 
<laughs> We're not going to go down that road. <laughs> so, Mick, now this is uh, this is kind of a joke question. Now, um, if uh, if I <laughs> if I played an old song from uh, one of the one of the hard to find singles, would if I played the first few notes, would you be able to tell me the name of the song? Oh, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't listen to us very much. Okay. <laughs> well, so, but um, you know, I, I, don't, I, I only listen just when when there's a need to, like when BMG <laughs> say to me, "Have a listen to this, you know, order of songs. Um, do you think you can improve on it or whatever?" You know, but yeah. that's only when I listen. To it. I, I tend to be listening um, most of the time to. Um, yeah, all the new stuff I'm writing. Sure, sure, I understand. And it occupies my brain, you know, 24/7, basically. So, uh, so if we see if we see a Uriah Heep release that says um, rarities, or or it says from the vaults, should we avoid that? <laughs> What's that? Sorry, I, I didn't quite get it. Catch that. If we see a CD with the release from the vaults, from the vaults. <clears throat> From the vault, yeah. Yeah, should we should we avoid that? Um, I mean, I, to be honest, you know, if that CD came out from the vault. I mean, I had no, no input with it at all. You know, it's just something the record companies did. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it actually says uh, uh, from the Bronze Age. Uh, obviously, your record label, and uh, it's got some of the old singles and B sides on there. And I think some of the liner notes uh, even say, yeah, uh, or you were quoted or one of the guys was quoted as saying, yeah, that one's not so good or something. So uh, that's all right. Uh, you know, we, we just want to give high fives and props to all the recent stuff. And uh, I'm just kind of joking with you here. But can I ask you about, see, when, when, you, when I do my research on Gary Thane, it, it mentions the electrocution and it says Dallas. And, of course, I'm here in Dallas. Uh, did did something yep. did something serious happen? Re it really. Well, it was um, you know one of those unfortunate things where we were playing Dallas, and the show was going well, and then Gary went up to sing. He didn't sing an awful lot in the show, but when he did, he went up to sing, and then when he when he put his lips on the microphone, it created a circuit because it was live, and it blasted him back um, into the drum riser. And uh, I think he injured his leg at the time, so we had to yeah. stop the show. Oh. <clears throat> so then um, we said to everybody, "We'll come back and, and play a free show," which we did. We came back and uh, we yeah. got the keys to the city and uh, and a certificate given to us and stuff like that. Um, but you know, it was one of those situations where Gary was a very frail person anyway. Uh, um, you know, he, he couldn't go to the gym and lift weights because he couldn't even lift the bar. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Let alone the weight, you know, he's yeah. that sort of frail person. Yeah. But, you know, um, he, he, he kind of, uh, it, that knocked stuff out of him, and it was, that was the kind of demise of him, to be honest, with, oh. with the band. Yeah. He never really recovered from that. Oh, no kidding. What, did it, um, uh, it, it, was it just something that affected him, that uh, kind of like mentally he was, uh, he was not... No, no, I think it was more just, it just you know, his overall body and, and, and how he felt, you oh, know, okay. generally. Yeah. And I also think that he, he, he felt that, you know, he didn't get the respect and attention he deserved from the management as well. Okay. You know, he, he felt that he'd given everything to the to the band for so many years and yet something like that happened and, and he didn't feel that there was that support mechanism from the, from the management. And I think that really hurt him and, and that was the kind of demise of it all, really. Yeah, all right, all right. Well, you know... Um, plus, plus, he did have a very you know, strong drug dependency, which didn't help matters. Yes. And doesn't help you think clearly, does it? No, it doesn't. And uh, so I, I imagine now all the guys in the band are, you know, follow mixed rules, and that are uh, that is, uh, hey, no drugs and, um, and, and no excessive drinking, and, and you know, you're, you're there to, to do a job and make music, and, and, and you guys tour every yeah, well, year. Absolutely, and, but yeah. don't forget, in those days, you know, there was no support mechanisms, and there's no priories to go to, no hospitals to go to, you know. Yeah. You either tried to deal with it yourself, or you, you couldn't, you know. It, um, and sort of, it was only later on that all those, those mechanisms came into place, you know where you could go and seek help from people. But gotcha, um, yeah. at that time, there was no real place anyone could go. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I, I just think right now you guys are firing on all cylinders. I do, Mick. And uh, yeah, I... Yeah, well, we, we are, we are, 
Well, we're loving it. You know, we're, yeah. we're out there touring all the time. Yeah, you know, we're playing 60 countries. Yeah. Uh, we're playing all the major festivals each year. You know, we're doing the rock cruises. You know, it's just all, all go, you know. And, and long may it last. As long as we've got health, we're going to be doing it. Heck yeah. I really appreciate your time here, Mick. And uh, I know you've got that cruise uh, coming up in a month or two. It, does that sail out of the U.K.? No, no, the, the, the cruise we're, do, we're, we're doing will be um, probably the, we're, we're, I think we're on the Rock Legends cruise for, for next year. The fly, um, sort of sails out of, um, excuse me, flies, sails out of um, Fort Lauderdale. Oh, does it? Okay, okay. Huh, yeah, an, we've, done, we've done it a couple of times, and we're going to do it next year too. So, it's, yeah. it's, it's start, in fact, it's a great way to start the year because we, we do that in January, early January, and then our, our rock and roll year starts from there on in. Yeah. So it's a good way to kick the year in. Heck yeah. Well, <clears throat> man, if I can make that, uh, let me reach out to Ace, and I'll give him a heads up. And also, hey, just uh, give him a thank you as well. Uh, you know, Ace has been very nice to work with and helpful in getting uh, – getting. I'm sorry we had to reschedule you from no, – uh, yeah. we're, we're very happy with our management now, you know, yeah. and we're, we're, we're also with an American agent, APA, Keith Naisbitt. So um, between Adam Parsons and, and Ace Trump and Keith Naisbitt, we're, we are firing all six cylinders, and, and – and, and, and long way it last too. Yeah, it when I when I watch the DVDs, uh, and I know there's been a few, it just seems like the audience is getting younger. But even if they're not, uh, they're 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 getting stronger, and there there's more of them. Uh, I don't know. It seems to me like like I said, it just uh, this is going to be a great year for you guys, and and uh, long may it rain. Well, we hope so too. I mean, the audience over in Europe is definitely getting younger and younger, which is fantastic. Well, so um, so it's not my imagination. Sorry? It's not my imagination. They are getting younger. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I've been in Europe for sure, yeah. And, and it's, it's, it's great to see because you get all the young kids down the front going nuts. I mean, they shout out for something like Gypsy that's probably that is a lot older than them. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> which, which just shows you that, you know, a good song stands the test of time. And I think that's the essence of it all, isn't it? When it all comes back to it with all the hoo-ha and everything that goes around it and all the publicity, it all gets down to the music in the end, isn't it? That's right, and, yeah. And, um... And luckily, we, we, our music, you know, loved in 60 countries around the world. Yes, indeed. And, 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 and people get caught up in labeling things. It doesn't matter. This is just straight ahead, in your face, rock. And, uh, you know, it could go under a lot of labels, but who cares? If you want a fun show, if you want to hear some great, great music, uh, you know, we're going to encourage all our listeners and, and, and viewers to uh, check out the new DVD and look for you guys on tour and maybe meet up with you in uh, Fort Lauderdale. As soon as possible. That would be fantastic. <laughs> that, would, that would be absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Then we can sit down and have a beer and have a chat. I love it. Great. <laughs> have a long one. Yeah. <laughs> Mick, uh, man, I, I'm going to stay in touch. I hope we can talk again. I really appreciate your time today. And uh, all the best to your family, uh, the band, uh, Bernie getting back and, uh, and everything. So, you know, I just say, um, man, thank you so much for all the great music. And, well, and uh, hey, Thank you very much for your support, too, Jay. It means the world to us. Thank you. You're very welcome. And uh, hopefully we'll talk soon. Thank you very much, Mick. Thanks, my friend. Take care, mate. All right. All right. Bye now. Bye-bye. Happy days. Bye-bye. Thank you.